I'm going to show you how you can create positioning maps uh, almost on the fly with your students in the classroom. Now, before seeing that, let's talk about what a positioning map is exactly. So let, let's open one of the case studies we have about positioning analysis. Uh, let's take uh, the Heineken case study. So in the Heineken case study, uh, and let's focus on the first data set uh, on top, Spanish customers have been asked to rate different beer, uh, brands of beer, uh, some local like Cruz Campo, some international like Heineken or Cornita, uh, and they've been asked to rate these brands on a bunch of attributes, such as whether they were perceived to be expensive, uh, well-known, premium, uh, with a bitter test, and so on. And so that very complex data can be summarized uh, graphically in a positioning map that is much easier to communicate and to analyze uh, in terms of competitive analysis, competitors, uh, unique positioning, uh, and so on. So in Ingenious, if you'd like to run a positioning analysis, you just need that kind of data, and we'll, we'll use that one. Uh, you run positioning analysis, uh, you select your perceptual data from the list of data you have on your dashboard. I'm not going to include any kind of preference data here, uh, and I'm going to focus on the Heineken brand, which is the focal brand of the, uh, of the case studies. Uh, if you'd like, we have many advanced options in terms of segmentation uh, of preference data and so on, but I, I'm just going to focus on uh, a basic positioning. So when you run a positioning analysis, the brands will be mapped on a 2D or 3D space, and the closer to map two brands will be, uh, the more competitors, uh, the closer competitors they are. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, to the core of the analysis, which is the uh, positioning of the brands in, uh, in the market. And so you have all the different brands over here, and you also have how they are perceived and how they're positioned compared to uh, to one another. So sometimes it's easier to just look at uh, the 2D view uh, of, of that. Uh, and if you look at the screen here, uh, you have in the upper right corner a bunch of brands which are perceived to be pricey, international, uh, sophisticated, premium, the kind of beer you drink to be seen in nightclubs. And uh, in the corner, Cornita, Heineken, Carlsberg, Budweiser uh, are pretty well positioned, while you have the other more mundane day-to-day -day beers uh, that are national uh, brands, uh, good value, the kind of beer you drink with the family and with food, and there you find Mahu, Cruz Campo, San Miguel, Estrella, and so on. And just from that kind of map, uh, you can draw a lot of conclusions about how a brand is positioned, how unique it is, uh, which competitors they have. You can lay out uh, on top of that preferences. You can segment those preferences. So it's, it's a very powerful uh, tool to analyze the market and to introduce your students to the idea of competitive positioning and, and unique positioning and so on. Now, what I'd like to do is to create my own positioning map with my own data from scratch. And it usually works well with groups of four or five. So let me tell you exactly what I ask my students to do. Uh, first of all, you start from a blank sheet of paper. And if you want to launch uh, an analysis of any kind in Ingenious, one good way to start is to generate a template. A template is going to tell you exactly what kind of data you need in which format, and it will even create fake data for you. Uh, so it's easier to, to fill out uh, with your students later on. So I'm going to create a template for a positioning map. And here I'm going to say, okay, we'll, we'll have uh, six brands, and these brands will be ranked on six different attributes. Uh, I'm not going to include preference data yet, uh, and I'm going to fill with random data just so 
we, we know what it's supposed to look like. And so it will create a data set, what we call a data block, uh, that tells you exactly where the data is supposed to be. So you, you are supposed to have the brands on the top row, you have, you're supposed to have the dimensions on the leftmost column, and then on a scale from 0 to 10, 1 to 5, whatever scale you'd like, as long as it's uh, consistent, you put the average ratings uh, there. Okay, so what I ask my students to do is this. Pick a market. Um, it could be airplanes, it could be cell phones, it could be wine, it could be business schools, anything you'd like. Uh, identify the key competitors, identify the dimensions on which these competitors compete and pos position themselves, and then tell us what your perceptions about these brands are. Now, the easiest way to do that, especially if you are in a small group, is uh, to use uh, Google Drive and specifically a Google Sheet. So take that uh, format keep it in mind, okay, and then create a spreadsheet in uh, Google Drive and you just pass, so you use Control-V, uh, you, you pass the format and you know exactly what kind of format you are supposed to have, okay. Now, remember that um, usually you have multiple users in a group and it's usually a good idea to have uh, multiple respondents and then average their responses. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do here. As an example, I'm, I'm going to uh, do a positioning map of uh, various statistical software and statistical solutions uh, available out there. So as a group, you ask your uh, students or participants to select a few brands that are representative of, of that space. So I'm going to use SPSS, SAS, Minitab, let's say R, Python, and uh, of course Ingenius. And these brands will uh, need to be compared and rated on a set of dimensions that are relevant for the market uh, and for the customer. So I'm going to say, okay, is it um, graphical? Is it complex? Uh, is it easy to use or not? Um, is it powerful? Does it require programming? Some do, some don't, some are in between. Uh, and can you focus on the problem rather than on, uh, on the statistics? So is it easy enough to use so that you don't talk exclusively about how to use the software, but you can actually focus on the business problem you want to address. So that's the basic template uh, you want to, to do and to have uh, if you do a positioning map. Okay. Now, remember, ideally, you'd like to have an average of perceptions from multiple customers. So if you have, if you have uh, let's say, four people in group, you're going to copy past that four times. Okay, I'm going to do three just to, uh, just to make sure. Uh, and um, a good idea is to put the name of the people supposed to fill out the survey. So let's say you have uh, Mike here, you have Steve there, and you have Arno. And then uh, you ask people not to fill out that part, which would be the average of, um, of everything else. Okay? And then you share. You, you share that, um, that spreadsheet with your group, and everybody uh, answer, uh, answer his or her uh, own part. So let's um, play my part. SPSS is graphical, yes, I'm going to use a scale from 1 to 5, make sure everybody uses the same scale, uh, and I fill out my, uh, my survey with uh, my own uh, perceptions. And I'm going to do that for myself, and I'm going to do that for uh, 
everybody else as well. Okay, so now everybody has answered um, this small survey. By the way, one trick, uh, it's much better to answer uh, one row at a time rather than uh, one column at a time. And so you come here and you compute the average. So the average of that one, that one, and come on, that one. And that's your um, answer. So on average, uh, people have given, in terms of perceptions, a 2.67 on the SPSS solution in terms of how graphical is it to compare to the others. Now you take that and copy past and you have your um, computations everywhere. Now remember that we're computing the average perceptions of the market. The three, four or five participants you have are not a representative market. We know that. So you have to make clear in the classroom that what you'll get is just an illustration of the process. It's not an actual positioning map uh, that should be seen as representative of any kind of uh, perception. That's really important to, to say in the classroom. It's just explaining the process and demystifying uh, the process of doing that. Another thing which is quite important to understand is that if someone doesn't know a product at all, it's, it's much better to leave it empty. So, for instance, if someone has absolutely no idea about Python, uh, just leave it empty and it's fine because the, the only matrix we are interested in, uh, in is the averages here. And you can perfectly have an average of five data points here, but an average of two data points over there. It's not ideal, but it's much better than having uh, random or uh, just three, three, three um, everywhere. So that's the, the data set we like to analyze, right? You take that, copy, go back to Ingenious, and past. Okay, and by the way, you, you could do it uh, from scratch completely. It's perfectly okay. Uh, it doesn't change uh, anything. The one thing I would recommend is do not enter input the data directly in ingenious because if you if something goes wrong if you click on the back button by accident i mean all the information will be lost uh, it's just a web page so make sure that your data is actually stored on uh, on an other document uh, i i recommend a google spreadsheet for that now you have your data uh, all you need to do is to launch a positioning analysis uh, and by the way, it's probably a good idea to rename your data. So it's perceptual data. Um, and uh, you run a positioning analysis. You only have one data block to select from, so uh, no choice there. Uh, everything is by default. Uh, we haven't dealt with preference data. You could uh, in more advanced um, situations. Uh, we have all the t tutorials in the world to explain how to do that. And my focal brand will be uh, ingenious. It doesn't change anything, actually. It just makes the, the brand a bit bolder and bigger in the positioning map. Remember that when you generate a report, you can select the format by just clicking on the small arrow here. You could create a PowerPoint file, automatically an Excel spreadsheet, and so on. I'm just going to stick to the web page. And if you like to understand the uh, different advanced options in terms of segmentation data and so on, uh, feel free to go to the uh, tutorial. I'm going to show it to you in a few seconds just to make sure you know where it is. So running the analysis. And then what I ask my students to do uh, usually is to go back, uh, come back in class, uh, either next session or after um, one hour, one hour and a half break, uh, especially in executive education session, and uh, explain uh, what brands they chose, why, what are the dimensions, and just analyze the, um, the output. So if you look, and we zoom in, if you look at uh, the positioning map here, you have 
Python and R very close to one another uh, at the extreme of ingenious, which is exactly uh, on, on purpose, and I realized I made a typo in ingenious, how embarrassing, uh, you have um, the different dimensions. So those models that require uh, programming are also the most powerful ones, and they tend to be complex, and that's where you will find uh, SAS and R and Python. And the exact opposite of that are the easy-to-use solution such as Minitab Ingenious with SPSS with a weird positioning in, in the middle, um, not as powerful and complex in some other solutions, but not as easy to use as others uh, either, uh, which is pretty much how I perceive SPSS um, personally. And so interestingly, when you, when you show that, uh, when, you, when you ask your um, students and participants uh, to create a positioning study, of course, they will screw up. They will make some small mistakes, like uh, forgetting one key attribute or comparing brands which are really not comparable. I mean, if you try to put Ferrari and Fiat on the same positioning map, the results will be obvious and completely uninteresting. So these kinds of mistakes will happen. It's really important to explain to your students that uh, you, know, you are in a safe space. You're there to experiment. Um, I have a strong feeling that you should not grade that kind of exercise, especially the first time they do it. And then you debrief in class and uh, show them, uh, give them some, some feedback and explain uh, what they could have done better uh, and so on. But it's a very nice way of demystifying uh, what a positioning map is and how easy it is to, uh, to create one with actual data. Uh, and of course, once you've done that with a simple exercise, um, a, a kind of fake market you're not really interested in, uh, and then uh, just for respondents, especially uh, participants in executive education, will clearly see the light at the end of the tunnel. They will understand, oh, I could do that easily with 50 of my customers on my own market. And that's usually, uh, a lesson they, they really enjoy and like uh, having the feeling that they go back to their companies with a toolbox they can use immediately to better understand the actual positioning of their market, uh, of their solution and of their competitors.